This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. How you doing, Cam? You doing all right? There we What's go. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. We lost Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? The tech, the, the the tech support is 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 gone, right? What yeah. Do you, uh, how do you fix the issues? You know, with the uh, <laughs> family is like it shows uh, you how much how much value Sean has because you know it's a strike right now and everything. He just like played the open and then got the hell out or something. I don't yeah. know what it is, but uh, yeah, so you, gotta, you gotta treat him better. Huh? <laughs> uh, I gotta say, um, this whole Kyle Shanahan thing. I uh, maybe you heard some of it. I'm kind of looking at it differently. Whether he took it first or second, to me, Kansas City was going to win one way or the other. Their defense was going to do whatever it had to do, and their offense was going to do whatever it had to do. So to me, it doesn't matter that much. We can debate, but in the end, his team was making mistakes throughout the game, just like Kansas City was making a ton of them in the first half and putting themselves in all kinds of bad positions. But the disturbing part, if I was a San Fran fan and if I'm a Dolphins fan, is the habitual nature of it, unfortunately. Kyle Shanahan losing the 25-point lead against the Patriots as the offensive coordinator, dropped a run. Last two trips here to the Super Bowl with the Niners, he's had a double-digit lead. You know, his players at the end of the game even talked about not knowing the situation, all that kind of stuff. And then the mistakes that were made whether you abandon the run in the third quarter, whether you think that was an issue or not, whatever. The bottom line is he's been in this situation three times. That's a lot more than most people ever get. Like I said, Marino was in that situation just one time. That's it. Right. He never got three cracks at it. Right. And I turn it over to Mike McDaniel, another terrific play designer. But again, mm -hmm. habitually, there are constant mistakes that are being made. And so whether it's a fair comparison or not, it is something to look at since they both come from the same tree. And I got to be honest in this long-winded question, I think that's what season three under Mike McDaniel is all about. A lot of it is, have you learned, my man? How, can you stop continually making the same mistakes you've been making for two years like your counterpart? Uh, Kyle Shanahan does in the game's biggest moments. So <clears throat> I'll start this with San Fran. I think that um, it's certainly a pattern. Like Kyle Shanahan, 0-3 in the Super Bowl. Um, it becomes a thing. And I talked about this on GMFB last week. You don't want to get in the category of like the best coach to never win a Super Bowl, right? The 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 uh, Marv you know, Leavis. the Marv Leavis, the Marty Schottenheimers, the uh, the, the Bud Grants, you know, um, all these legendary coaches who were very good coaches, but didn't get it done, you know, and, and we know our, it only. Our boy Andy Reid was that before. Absolutely. And that, that was my point. This is the Andy Reid era of Kyle Shanahan, because if you remember when he was in Philly, he kept getting to the conference title games. He kept getting to the Super Bowl, but he couldn't get over the top. Now, Andy was doing this for about 15 years. Kyle Shanahan has done it for seven. But at the same token, Kyle Shanahan has now been to – four NFC championship games in five years and has zero rings has been the two Super Bowls in five years has zero rings and it starts to get in your head a little bit it starts to you know can I do it do I have what it takes your team starts to wonder when we get to the big game are we going to crumble again um I think that this I one I wait it's three Super Bowls because we have to lay the Atlanta one because it was really well, I'm awesome. saying in the last five years I'm just saying in the last five years in the immediate you know, right. yes, three Super Bowls overall. He's 0-3 and three, and three Super Bowls. But I'm just saying, like, in a short frame for San Fran, four and five for the conference title that you're in. A, that's impressive. I'd say most fan bases would take that. But mm -hmm. if you don't have a title, it, it leaves it feeling sort of empty if that's your fan base, right? Um, <clears throat> so Kyle Shanahan has to wear a lot of this. It's going to be a rough offseason for him. He's going to wear a lot of it. I don't know if I – if I if I'm bothered as much by the the overtime stuff, like I know a lot of people were, whether he picked to go first or second, I don't know if it really mattered. Uh, I think the analytics said it was about even. You do want a, your players to be aware of the rule, but I don't think it affected the game per se as much as like um, 
you know, they're I, not. I, I love the slight shot by Cam at the end there. Yeah. You'd love your players to know, you know. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it is bothering that you have like three or four players in post game saying, oh, well, I just thought we, we score, we win, you know, that like that should affect your decision making, your play, how you go about things. So I would want my players to know that that's on Kyle. Um, I will say this, though, like they were the better team throughout the game. And and as much as it's on Kyle Shanahan, the reality is they just ran into a dude who is the best quarterback of this generation and yeah. came to a situation of like when when he had the ball in his hands at the end with a chance to win. Everybody at home, your house, my house, heck, even 49ers fans house are like, he's going to do it. It's just who he is. And so until they have and they won't. A Mahomes, a game changer quarterback, you're always going to be the outside looking in. And yeah. so, kind of pull this full circle with the Dolphins. You were talking about Mike McDaniel. Um, obviously, he comes with the Kyle Shanahan tree. He's a different guy, but I'm sure Dolphins fans would at least love a taste of that 49ers success, the conference championships, the Super Bowl appearances. I think <clears throat> what is interesting and what Mike can maybe learn from Kyle Shanahan is that it's more than just the scheme, it's the situational. It is the um, understanding of, of, of the of moments. And, and, and ultimately, every team, including the Dolphins, I'm just going to keep it fair with this, is asking themselves a question. Do we have the quarterback? Do we have the team that we can go mono mono with Patrick Mahomes? And for most people, it's going to be no. Nobody, nobody, there's not really been an answer, but everything is going to be matched up on them. They are the dynasty of this era, just like the Patriots were. Everything is every team is created to try to beat the Patriots, to try to match that. I think you're going to see an offseason where the Dolphins are trying to find what can we do to close that gap. I don't know what it is, but that's that's the challenge. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. It's uh it's a hell of a challenge and and I think McDaniel has to do that that's where you McDaniel needs to be a little bit more like Spo where okay, you may not have the best talent, you may not have the best team, but have them best prepared and right. you, and you be best prepared. OK, because nobody, nobody picks the heat to be in the finals or the Eastern Conference finals for four straight years. Right. Nobody, nobody, unless, you know, you the, the blind ass heat fan, dolphin fan that thinks every year their team is going to win the Super Bowl. We've we have those people. Yes, that's fine. But outside that, most normal people, they don't look at the heat that way. They're just impressed that Spo is as good as he is. You know what I mean? And that's what I think I'm asking of Mike McDaniel. Hey, man, listen, Andy Reid, you know what the difference is? It's Donovan McNabb, man. It's. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Andy Reid's a heck of a coach. I got a lot of respect. But the biggest difference between Philly and KC was not him becoming a dramatically better coach. Well, he got a different quarterback. He got a quarterback. <laughs> He got he got he got a player who and I've said this throughout and now that he's won, I think it's just him and Tom Brady. Like I, I got all respect for Joe Montana, I got all respect for Dan Elway and 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 um, and, and Joe uh, and John Elway and uh, Dan Marino and all these guys who are legends. But to me, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, and eventually, I'm. I'm, I'm Unlike you, I've watched them all that you talked about. I yes. watched their entire careers. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that at yeah, all. I was, like, I was like, I know I'm younger, so I don't Great. want to disrespect history, which is why I think your opinion is valid. Because, like, I, I did not grow up watching uh, Montana, Elway, Marino, um, you know. But I, I can put Brady in Montana's role, and they would win the same because he has the same characteristics money player, super accurate, ball placement, anticipatory skills, all that kind of shit. So that's why I can interchange them a little bit. And I can say, yeah, the same thing would have happened, you know, overall. So I don't have a problem with that. Could we have a discussion and yeah. I could an argument for Elway uh, yeah. against, against Mahomes? Yeah, because Elway didn't have the teams that Mahomes has right now. Right. You know? The only time he had him was at the end of his career in 95 and 96 yep. when he had a defense and a running game, something right. that you weren't going to win with Sammy Winder, bro. Right. You just weren't going right. to win with Sammy Winder. And I think that stuff matters. That stuff matters, which is why I'm not a big – why I'm not the big ring chaser. Like, everyone seems to count rings and say that defines 
who your quarterback, who the goat is. Like, oh, Brady's got what six rings, seven, one of those two, and seven. because of, seven, because of that, no one can be the goat until you get seven. I disagree. I think I just, could certainly be the goat if he only gets four or five. Um, by the way, I'll give you an example. It's not the best example, but it shows a little bit of that. What happened this weekend? Um, yeah. Disgusting that Antonio Gates doesn't get in first ballot. Why? Yep. He doesn't have a ring. Yep. He doesn't have a ring. But yep. Antonio Gates is a first ballot Hall of Famer. End of story. I've watched this sport for 50 years. That's as good as it gets, bro. He's yep. as good as Kelsey. He's as good as Kittle. He, he's as as good as uh, the guy that played for the Chargers before. What's his name? Uh, Winslow. Yep, uh, Kelly Winslow. He's as, he's as good as any tight end that ever played. I get he's not the best blocking tight end. He's not the kid on the Gronk. I get all of that, but it was third down. You knew the ball was going to Gates every time, and you not. could not stop that shit. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the epitome of a Hall of Famer. Yeah, like, I grew I grew up watching Gates. I'm passing was it off to Jim Brown and Walter Payton. I'm throwing it to Rice. Yeah. You're not doing anything about it, bro. It's yeah. over. Here goes Justin Jefferson. I don't give a shit who you got on him. I'm burning your ass. Just yeah. certain people are like that. And to me, we 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 we're, we're doing that to to we do this all the time to players. They don't have a championship, so we don't treat them the same way. Antonio Gates is as good as anybody that's ever played the game, dude. Yeah, Antonio Gates should be a Hall of Famer. He should have been in this week, and, and he's gonna, he's yeah, and he's gonna be in uh, very soon. I just you know, Hall of Fame stuff confuses me. Now, now let's get to Andy. Reed. Yeah. Your 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 boy in Philly, since you're a Philly guy, yeah, absolutely. And Andy, Andy Reid, hindsight. Andy Reid is Eric Spolstra with Jimmy Butler. How do you like them apples? Mm. You don't mm. give them enough. But he got you to the best he can get you yeah. with the McNabb. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. now go give him an elite quarterback because McNabb was good. Yeah. Mahomes is, you know, it's the elite. Best. It's the best. 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 Yeah. So that's the difference, dude. And so Andy Reid actually has done what Eric Spolster has done with Jimmy Butler the last four years. Yeah. You, and I, I'd say for Andy, Andy, you couldn't, you couldn't ask any more from Andy Reid and what he did in Philadelphia. Right. He did the best. Right. He could here. Right. He has the balance, and he's grown like one a few years back. What did they have? They had the balance. They had yeah. everything they needed. And he's grown too through his time there. Like I, I watched those Philly teams a lot. Andy Reid was like criticized a lot because of clock uh, management. management. That was his thing. If he got in under two minutes, fourth quarter, he would blow it. Right. Yeah. He, I'm not saying he's perfect, but he's got a lot better in his biggest criticism, which is why I'm, I, I have a willingness for coaches to grow. I know you're critical of Mike McDaniel a lot of some of his – I think Andy Reid's an example of how you can grow through time over your Achilles heel as a coach. And the hope is Kyle Shanahan, he can get over this being his Achilles heel, heel for big games, you know, holding leads. Um, but in Tulsa, it's going to be your narrative. And so right now – it's Kyle Shanahan's narrative. It's Mike McDaniel's narrative. By the way, I and, give McDaniel a chance. Yeah. Whereas Flo and Philbin, they couldn't build staffs, and they had no people skills. I could see that. And so, to me, that was going to be their demise. Right? right? And, and they also had the other characteristic that I keep telling people. I love coaches who have been hired and fired 87 times. Mm -hmm. Because they've been all over, and that's helped McDaniel that he's – Philbin and Flo were stuck in one organization forever. And then you had Adam Gase, who had no people skills also and was kind of dead set in his ways. Whereas McDaniel, I think, has the intelligence and he has an offensive mind that none of these guys ever had. I give him a chance, actually. I, I think he can figure it out. It's up to him now. Now, he's got to prove it. You know what I mean? But. Like, I gave up with those guys in their second years. Like, I, you know, I, well, actually with Philbin, I gave up when he got hired because I knew, like, five people in the Green Bay building, and they were like, if you're going to hire one of our guys, hire Tom Clements at least. Not that guy. That's what they all yeah. told me. To a man, all five of them that I knew in that building. They yeah. all said Tom Clements. Why? Because he's, like, the guy that actually develops the quarterbacks. Yeah. <laughs> so, and 
that that's been the Dolphins' problem for whatever. But uh, that I had inside information that Philbin was just not going to be good for it. They told me also he won't be able to build a staff. McCarthy's not going to let anybody go and all that other stuff. So I I lost out on these guys in the second year. I'm not there with McDaniel, but I am very critical of what's going on. But I think he is smart enough. Come on, Cam. He's yeah. got to be able to figure this thing out, bro. Yeah, I think so. I think he will. I think he will. It's going to be a very interesting year. I've said it time and time again. I think the roster is going to decrease talent-wise. So you're going to need your coaches more than ever to get the most out of these young players and to learn from their errors. They This year they had margin of error because of their talent. They could go out there, play sloppy, get away with it. That margin of error, I think, is going to decrease. And so your discipline, your focus, your your uh, attention to details has to increase to match that. And you can win that way, as you mentioned with the Heat. The Heat have not always had the most talented team. I think the Dolphins went out and made a huge talent splashes this offseason, which is great, but you need the other stuff. You need the grit. You need the culture. You need the attention to detail, the discipline. And I think those are the things they really need to hone in on this offseason. There's a – there's a – a real fact in this sport and in a lot of other sports, it's not a football thing. There's a lot of other, a lot of other pro sports that athletes, uh, some of them really are playing for the love of the money, not necessarily the game. Uh, the championship isn't necessarily the, the end all be all, but Tyreek Hill does have one of them. And he watches his former team win too. And I know over the weekend he kind of downplayed it and, hey, we'll have our time and all that kind of good stuff. He said all the right things. Does he believe what he tweeted? Um, I think there's probably still some, some jealousy, some – I don't know what you call it. I don't know if it's jealousy or – Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you, you, it's, it's like anything else, right? If you see the place you left having success without you, it, it, it hits a little different. Everybody would love, trust me, if I left, left NFL Network today to go to a, go to a different company, I wouldn't want everybody saying, oh, wow, look at how NFL Network's grown the last year. And, and I'm like, well, I've been gone. Like, it's, you know, you start to relate it in your mind, like, damn, was I holding them back? Like, why, why couldn't, you know, what if I stayed a little longer? What if I did this? Like, I think it's natural. And I don't think it's any indictment on the Dolphins. I think it's just the reality of, you have a legendary quarterback in Patrick Mahomes. And I don't even know if Tyreek understood at that time just how much he could do without, right? I think Tyreek's part of Tyreek leaving is to prove how good he was, how good, how, how much he wasn't dependent on a Patrick or a Travis Kelsey. And he's shown that he's not dependent. He can have success with Tua as his quarterback um, as well. But the winning, the winning is what hurts because, you know, they clearly have not won at the equal level since the trades happened. And so I'm sure he's definitely hurting a little bit. I, I know publicly he said he was rooting for the Chiefs, and I'm not saying he's he was lying, but I think oh, a part of him, I, I think, a, yeah, it's a lot of his boys. I think he's rooting probably for his boys, his relationships, but I'm sure a part of him was like, man, if they lose, then, you know, they only got one more. You know, two more, it starts to feel a little different. Like I maybe missed out on the legendary, on the legendary uh, dynasty. This is why I laugh at everyone that tries to make fun of Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. Because I've watched him since he was a child doing his shit from high school to college to right. the pros. And the bravado is what turns some people off, right? But see, I don't have a problem with bravado when bravado is backed with facts and you get it done every single time. And Tyreek wanted to do a Deion Sanders, even though this was done before he was born, probably. I don't know what year it was. But back in the early 90s, I don't know what year was Tyreek born. But in the early 90s, Deion yeah, said. 93, 94, I'm guessing. Uh, somewhere there. Yeah. So it was right around when he was born. Uh, Dion said, yeah, you know, uh, I think I'm going to help Dallas win the Super Bowl this year. I helped San Fran this year. I'm just going to go over to Dallas and help them mm -hmm. win the Super Bowl. And that's exactly what happened. He right. went over to Dallas and they went and won the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because yep. you had Dion, you eliminated, you know, whoever was the number one receiver, 
your day was done. You weren't going to catch a ball. It was over for you because there was nobody that could cover like that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and there are certain guys that can do this kind of stuff. And this is why I laugh at all these people, because when he goes to Jackson State and then now he goes to Colorado and you keep doubting him and it's like, bro, did you not watch him play baseball and football in one day? Did right. you not watch him like help an entire football team win a, a, a Super Bowl against a rival? Are, are you yep. not watching his entire career? Everything he tells you he's going to do, he ends up doing it every single time. Mm -hmm. He make a couple of those kind of guys, dude. And Tyreek is special, but he ain't Dion special. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to go down as a Hall of Famer, play a first ballot Hall of Famer. Sure. One of the best receivers ever. But it shows you just the difference of how significant quarter play, quarterback play is and the importance of everything. Sure. And sure. like I said, this is not a knock on Tua. I think this is more of praise of just how much Patrick Mahomes is a level above the rest of this league. And – I think that you're seeing this, and I know I complain about it sometimes too. We obsess about, like, why is the quarterback always the focus? Why is every sports shock show talking about the quarterback? Why is he the only one who gets the MVP? Why is this? Why is Because the quarterback changes the game more than any other player. Like, it's, it's such a big effect. And Patrick Mahomes has done with a arguably less talented Chiefs roster than, you know, probably, say, eight or 10 other teams in this league and still brought them a championship. That to me is just something you can't measure. And so, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Tyreek could play, Tyreek could play the best wide receiver season ever. It was not going to win the Dolphins a Super Bowl this year. And that's yeah. the difference. You know, Cameron, it's and, also a part of understanding the game, mm -hmm. and the situation that that person and that team is in at the moment that it's different than other other situations. None of us with a brain is sitting here going, oh, Brock Purdy's not good enough. No, dude, uh -huh. you can easily win with Brock Purdy. Right. The difference is, you know, some guys, you can just let them loose and they can play outside of the the normal constraints of football. Yep. And, and Joe Montana, which this is why when you say Brady Mahomes, and I tell you I don't have a problem with that because – Joe Montana won because there was incredible balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roger Craig was always there to run the ball and to catch the ball. Right. And there was always a, a, a hall of fame tight end. And eventually they had to go up. Uh, it didn't end up in the hall of fame, but Tom Rathman was like a nasty ass fullback, bro. Right. And right. then you had obviously the two monsters playing wide receiver and everything else. And you had a hall of fame defense dude at yep. times. Now, what you can't do with M Montana is tell him, I need you to play the Dan Marino role right now. You have no running game, no defense, and all you're going to do is air out the ball and they know it. Right. He can't do that. Right. He can't mm -hmm. do that. This is why I laugh at people. Oh, he's a system player. No, idiot. Everyone's a system player. Because mm -hmm. that's what coaches have to figure out. Where you thrive. What right. system, what scheme. Because... There's only one Pat Mahomes that can play in any system you want. Okay. Right. Lamar Jackson cannot play in any system you want. If you're going to make it a passing game where he's got to sit there and play the Marino game, he'll die. He'll die on an Island all by his lonesome. Why? Because he has to use his legs. How did so this end up taking a shot at Lamar? I feel like no show is complete. It's, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm taking a shot at Joe Montana, dude. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm calling it like I see it. Everyone has limitations. I don't mm -hmm. give a shit if you're Joe Montana. I don't give a shit if you're Marino. You think you can play Marino in Lamar Jackson's role? No. You can play Purdy in Lamar Jackson's role? No. No right. one can play Lamar. If you want a compliment, no one can play in Lamar Jackson's role because right. he's the only athlete of that kind. We've mm -hmm. never seen anything like Michael Vick can't play Lamar Jackson's role. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So everybody is some kind of system somewhere. Yeah, but at the same time, you also have to understand the situation you're in. Hindsight now tells you in this conversation, Andy Reid was phenomenal in Philadelphia. Yes. He did the best he possibly really could with his experience and with Donovan McNabb. 
now you give him Pat Mahomes. My God, everybody looks better. And now you've got the guy that's the ultimate eraser because everybody wants Mahomes. But if you look at the history of the league, how many quarterbacks have you developed that can play in any system you want? Right. Not right. that many. Not many. Not many. Not many. You know, uh, Jim Kelly ran a K-gun in Buffalo with mm -hmm. Reed and all these guys, Thurman Thomas and all that kind of stuff. And, brother, this was like a quick strike moving offense. Not every mm -hmm. quarterback could do that. Kelly could do that. Some other guys could. But you could not put everybody in that system. And so that, to me, you have to have an understanding also of where the team is at, what the coach is, who the quarterback is. But that doesn't mean that without Mahomes, you can't win a title. You can right. win it with Purdy, but you've got to run the ball. You've got to play smart. You got to stay away from mistakes because when you run into the Brady's and you run into the Mahomes and you run into the Montana's, you need to be perfect as a football team. And if right. you do that, then you're the Baltimore Ravens of the early 2000s and you win a championship. You're the Broncos of 2016 or whatever it was. You're the Bucks of 03, correct? Or something like right. that. You have your moments even with lesser quarterbacks. But mm -hmm. when you play those special dudes, you got to you gotta play in a, the entire team has to play an elite level. We can't be blaming Purdy at all. Purdy did a damn good job in that game. I'm with you. He's not the reason they lost that game. You know? And yeah. so with Tua, can you win? Of course you can. But McDaniel's going to have to stick to the run. He's going to have to become more of a physical team. You uh -huh. can't play Tua like you play Marino, which is what I keep telling everybody all year here. And that's his problem right now with McDaniel. He plays Tua like he thinks he's Jim Kelly in the K-Gun and Marino in the K-Gun, when that's not what he is. He's a a play action quarterback that you need the running game to assist him, just like Purdy, just like a lot of normal quarterbacks mm -hmm. have a freak, bro. We used to have one in the 80s and the 90s. We had a freak for a while. Sorry, bro. They don't grow on trees. But right. you can. Absolutely. And it's fine. You can win. Like the other teams have to try. It's not like, oh, well, what are we going to do? We don't have Mahomes. You try. You try. And, and, and maybe you get them one year. 49ers tried, the Ravens tried, the Bills tried, the Dolphins tried. This was not the time. But next year, who knows? You, you, maybe, maybe you catch them in a the wrong year. Maybe you catch them on the right day. Maybe you got the right formula. Um, but right now, you're stuck in the era with the GOAT. And you got to deal with it. It is what it is. Hey, hey Zoe and Timmy. Yeah. And Harley and all those. Oh, that, how, how, do you think, how do you think all those teams felt when MJ – was the going Pacers, through the Pacers, the Jazz, the, the, the Cavs, the Heat, the Knicks. Yeah. Like well, they were good. They were really good teams. They, they could all have had a different history. history. They, they all could have won a title yes. and one dude cock blocked them. One yeah. dude cock blocked them. What are you going to do, yeah. bro? Right. It is what it is. Like I said, you just ran into the wrong guy in the wrong gear. It was Tom Brady for a lot of folks. Like, like how many rings would Peyton Manning have had? If it wasn't for Tom Brady, how many rings might a, a Philip Rivers or a Big Ben might have had if, if, if they ran into it? They just ran into an era where it was Tom, you know, for 20 years. And now it's Peyton for how, I mean, if now it's uh, Patrick for however long it is. And somebody's going to sneak in. They don't, they're going to win all of them. There's going to be a couple quarterback, and you just hope that your team is positioned to be one of those quarterbacks who breaks up the mix, you know, like a Joe Flacco Ravens and, and, in 08 or uh, a, a Broncos with 2015 with with Peyton Manning in the bunch or uh, the Seahawks the year they got the Malcolm Butler. You just hope that you're in that mix where you can make a play. You can be that team one of those years and and uh, just kind of survive the air. Excellent football conversation. What do you got going on in the NFL Network, my friend? Well, I am actually starting my vacation um, today. Um, I'm going to Europe. I'm going to Barcelona to Rome, to Florence, Madrid. Uh, so we're going to be going out there for actually leaving out here about four and a half hours. And uh, we'll, we'll be there until the Saturday uh, before combine. So about a week and a half. So we'll have to figure out how we do the show. I may have to pop on a, a little bit later uh, towards combine time. I don't know what my service is going to look like in Barcelona. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I snuck in a vacation. 
uh, for wifey, it's her 30th birthday. Uh, it was a month ago, so we're doing a little celebration here and uh, sneaking in between Super Bowl and Combine because we still got another two, three months of uh, football action. So, You'll love the food. Great food in Barcelona. Uh, yeah. Obviously, that's my people. Al Zugari is a Spanish name, Vasco. I love, it. I love so it. My people are from the mountains, apparently. That's where my people come from. I don't know. That's what I've been told. Uh, right. But it is because a lot, of you know, it's uh, we're like Americans. Cubans really don't exist. They came yeah. from other countries, and you know, they just migrated. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a real interesting thing how we got this thing. Like we want to hate migrants when that's all these countries are made of Absolutely. is migrants. Absolutely, <laughs> hilarious. That's all it's made of. All it's made of. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> It's, it's hilarious. Anyway, follow him on Twitter at Cameron Wolf and catch his work there at the NFL Network. Cam, as always, thank you, my brother. We'll catch Appreciate up later you. on. Thank you, right sir. Now. Thank you. you got it. There you go. Cameron Wolf, baby. KSDT CPAs. Make sure you reach out to them. They are hiring. They've got offices in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. And uh, when it comes to KSDT, listen, if you need uh, you need help for your business, we got tax season's coming up. I hate to mention it. But it's very important. So tax, advisory, assurance, uh, accounting, they can help you in every which way possible. And especially if you own a business, you know you need that guidance throughout the year. Call them, 305-670-3370. Please tell them that we sent you. They'll take care of you. Use that QR code for your personal or your business taxes. And you can be anywhere. They can help you. doesn't really matter. You can do a lot of that on the phone. KSDT CPA, and they're hiring in offices in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, and they've got an office in Charlotte, North Carolina. They're hiring there. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.